Hey, welcome back to another video. This is going to be a short video series I'll be doing on Ethereum and Bitcoin trading. Today, I'm going to be talking about moving averages, but more specifically, the golden cross and the death cross. Now, their terminology is to explain specific signals within the moving average, and that's what I wanna go over today. So let's get started. So what is a golden cross and a death cross? Effectively, they are moving average signals when they cross against each other. Now let's review what I have so far. I have a TL moving average, which is a fast one, it tracks the price better, and a slow moving average. They are 30 days and 90 days, one month and three months, obviously. So what, ha what is a golden cross? Golden cross happens when the slow moving average is crossed by the fast moving average. In this case, you can see the TL line is going up, meaning that the short term trend is more bullish than the longer term trend and that in itself is called the golden cross it's a very strong and powerful signal usually you only use these signals for a longer term like a month to a year worth of moving average obviously bitcoin is very you know it's not it's it's not like a 10-year stock or whatever so you got to use a slightly shorter term to predict the uh, movement so basically a death cross is obviously the opposite that means that a a a short-term moving average is crossing a longer term moving average to the downside so this is, will be a negative cross right here so the short-term moving average is going against the longer term so this is the general definition uh there's a very more strict version of the two two golden cross the two crosses um and that is uh, basically, for a golden cross, a more strict version of the golden cross is that you must have the moving average must be both tilting up. So in this case, it's almost tilting up for both both cases. You can see that this one is almost flipping to the to the to the to the positive slope for the uh, for the what is this color red color. Uh, the TO is obviously going up, but over here, this is not a death cross because the the red color line is still moving to the upside while the teal is crossing down so in this more strict version of the two crosses um i personally find uh that it is more reliable uh in many cases it gives you a lot less false signals and uh there's less entries and exits so therefore um generally you trade less it's generally a good thing um over here you can see this is this is another golden cross it's very it's very i'm i'm probably need to do this on a log scale here it's very hard to see uh exactly that it's so it's barely crossing but it, it is it's true it's true now this one's another death cross by the strict definition it is not true by the looser definition it is so it's up to you which one to use i, I personally per, per, personally like to use the the more strict version okay so now i want to talk to you guys a little bit about almost like a disclaimer about moving averages and crossing of moving averages during a trendy market anytime when it's trending it's very effective it works very well it is one of the best signals you can get if the, if you had a trailing stop on a seven this is the seven day moving average if you had a trailing stop you would have made a killing or on the downside if you shorted it but the disclaimer is that during a choppy market, choppy market meaning that it goes up and down, has no real trend, it's just noise, it could be uh, some pump and dump, I don't know, manipulation, whatever you call it, it's choppy, right? Moving average does really bad. And the reason why it does really bad is because be mo most of the time when in the consolidation pattern, moving average is mostly flat. When I say flat, it means the slope is flat, right? So when the slope is flat, it's easy to cross one another. And these are often false signals, right? So in many ways, uh, you must be very, very careful trying to buy a cross or a death cross or a golden cross during a consolidation. That's, that's, that's usually a false signal. So how, another question is, how do you decide when it's trending and when it's, um, when it's uh, consolidating? Right? There's uh, many ways. One of them is called the Boilinger band, which also uses moving average of some sort, or an average true range, or a volatility index of some sort to kind of gauge the volatility and the tr general trend direction of the market. So, so that's what you, that's what I have so far today. Um, I want to let's analyze the Ethereum price as well because this is a Bitcoin Ethereum 
trading video so over here i have a let's not look at the 90 days because the 90 day is literally too long let's get rid of it right now so let's only look at the seven day and the 30 day right so you can see that over here we have what is this called log scale do i have log scale on i have log scale it's still really hard to see but you can you could analyze this yourself this is a golden cross this is this is a death cross so you would have you would have done really well like let's let's see here the golden cross ends up to become a uh it's hard to say if this is a death cross or not no no this is not this is not a death cross there's no signal here uh, despite despite the fact that i want to say there's a signal there is no signal but the buy side is there there's there's a death cross right there right the golden cross is right here you probably would have made a break even trade over here it seems like you still have a couple days up right so so that that's basically uh ethereum prices right here right now we're uber bearish right now it looks like we're gonna retest the lows uh, this movie the longer term moving average which is only 30 days really uh is uh over us and this it's below the seven day it's below the 30 day kind of bearish um bitcoin price is obviously very bullish as you can see i think there's an inverse correlation between the two uh basically uh, Bitcoin price tends to go up while Ethereum tends to go down. They're like substitutes of each other too too many ways. I did go long at about 28, 40, 43 on my, on my second video. So that is about it. Stay tuned for the next set of videos. It's going to be on average true range, which is a very, very interesting. And I love using that indicator to set my stops. Okay, so uh, follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the channel and I'll be crunching these bit short videos out because it takes so, no time for me to do it and I don't want to waste too much of your time. I just got a text message. So see you guys next time. Have a good one.